VW Golf is an absolute hatchback legend. So the Mark 1 Golf came out in 1974 and since that um, we have seen over 40 years of development in the Golf and over 30 million pounds worth of car sales. 40 years later the Mark 7 Golf arrived in around 2012-2013 the first sort of model started to come out and in the Mark 7 Golf like the one we're driving today it comes with a 2 litre TSI engine so that's the turbocharged petrol engine and as stock it produces 300 horsepower and 380 newton meters of torque so nothing to be um, complaining about there with the stock power plenty of grunt from the stock engine um, however in this video we'll show you how many things we can do to really get that power up. So that power is delivered through a really clever four-wheel drive system. Um, it's got something called a Haldex unit in this, so it's a brilliant clever four-wheel drive system. So it means that the grip and the drivability of the Golf Mark 7 are is absolutely fantastic. And as you can see in our previous videos as well, the thing just absolutely grips, especially off launch control, whether it's round corners, it really does handle very, very well. mode it comes with race mode it comes with an eco mode and it also comes with an individual mode so you can set up different preferences specifically to your driving style which is a pretty cool fun little feature really now they did also bring out a manual version of the golf r when they developed it now that is a cheaper option the dsg box is around about 1500 pound more it's an additional extra however we will talk about later in this video why it's much better to go for DSG. It's faster on gear changes, it's faster on launches, and just overall, the drivability from the DSG box is absolutely unreal. One of the best gearboxes I have personally ever driven, and the feedback from a lot of other people as well is absolutely fantastic. Far was brought out um, to rival a few other hot hatches. So you've got hot hatches, things like the Renault Megane um, that they brought out, the Renault Megane RS. You've got the 135i, the 140i as well, it rivals. And even things like the new Honda Type R, which of course runs a two litre turbocharged engine as well. We'll talk a bit more in this video why the Golf R differs to that and, and how we think it's better. However, there are obviously a lot of other rivals out there with different price points, different power figures, different modifications and everything like that as well. So as most of you car nuts will know, the GTI Mark 7 comes with a pretty cool interior. It comes with like tartan seats. Um, there's a lot of other different little bits and bobs in there. The seats are really nice actually in that. That's something that's really missing in the Golf R. Just little bits and bobs like that and some of the rival's interiors are maybe a bit more sexy than the Golf R. Another downside to the Golf R is the miles per gallon. It is pretty bad. Um, they claim 40 miles per gallon combined um, on the paper. However, it is nowhere near that. Even when we were running at stock, we were hitting about 27, 28 on a really good eco run on the motorway. Now, I dread to tell you what we're actually doing. We're under 20 miles per gallon now with what, we're doing, what we've done to the car. So um, the MPG isn't one of the best things to do with the car. However, it is a performance car. So I suppose we can um, let VW off for that. Not like they um, try and do anything to do with their emissions or you know try and falsify their figures at all. Stock power as well from the Golf R is quite boring. We were really surprised the first time we drove the um, Golf R in stock form how underpowered it actually was. Um, we 
took the first, we did a load of development down in London on the first sort of Mark 7 Golf Rs and I was absolutely shocked. For 300 horsepower, I was expecting a hell of a lot more. So the stock power is very boring. However, of course, we do know how to get some more power out of it. So the Golf R doesn't actually scream performance at you when you look at it. The design is quite basic still, and most people who probably don't know their cars will just assume that this is just a run-of-the-mill Golf, which is a bit of a shame because it is a performance car. When you talk about the rivals of things like your 140i and your Honda Type Rs with like the body kits on and the aggressive wheels and arches and stuff, you can tell that that is a performance hot hatch, whereas the Golf R, the design I think lets it down slightly. However, again, there are modifications that you can do and we do that will obviously spruce that up a little bit and make it look a bit sexier for you. So in terms of modifications and modifying the Golf R, there are absolutely tons of things available on the market for these now. Um, whether that's the Golf R platform, whether it's the Audi S3 8V platform, the Seat Leon Cupra platform, the Skoda Octavia platform, Audi TTS platform, there are absolutely tons of platforms that all use the same engine um, and a lot of them the four wheel drive apart from the Cupra. So there's tons of stuff out there for modifying the vehicles and that's why we've got one as a project car, that's why we're doing so many different things to it as well. So on this specific Golf R, which is our DK Tuning R700 project, which is the project that we're getting this to 700 horsepower, this is running about 425 at the minute and it's really maxed out at the minute with the modifications that we've done. Um, and as you can see, it pulls like an absolute train. Um, you get some lovely induction noise as well from our Forge Motorsport cold air feed induction kit. Um, the other modifications that we've done, we've got a Forge front mount intercooler on it. We've got a Scorpion Decat downpipe, three inch. We've got a Forge oil catch can return pipes. We have um, a Team Dynamic um, Pro Sport or Pro Race 1.2 lightweight alloys, which look gorgeous. We also have the Forge uprated recirc valve. We also have the Forge Motorsport muffler delete. We have the Forge high flow discharge pipe. As you can see, we like our Forge products. So we've got a lot of products on there. We've got the AirTech Big Boost Pipe kit as well. Um, I think that's about it for now that we've done. And obviously the tune has all been done by us in-house DK tuning. And the performance on it at the minute is absolutely crazy. In sport mode, which I'm in now, um, using the flappy paddles or, or shifting from the DSG box itself is so, so responsive. That it's like driving some kind of rally car it's absolutely incre incredible and you only get this lovely induction noise as well when you're sort of in the race mode and you're actually pushing the car you don't get it all the time which is quite nice i've had cars before where you get a constant sort of induction noise but this is just a nice nice sort of like old school rally induction noise almost it really sounds throaty it's not chavy it's not this sort of like crazy sort of blow off sound all the time that's doing your head in it's really really quite subtle and nice really and especially for driving around when you want a bit of fun like this it's good to have that so in our opinion vw have produced the best or if not one of the best hot hatches that you can buy um, for, for your money these days. I mean, these now, you can get these for under £20,000. Uh, with a few thousand pounds worth of mods, you can be running close to 500 horsepower. So for us, this is the ultimate hot hatch out of all the others. Maybe we're a bit biased because we have one and we're doing, as a, doing it as a project, but that's our opinion. I think they're brilliant to drive, comparing to driving the other cars that we've talked about, like your 140i's, your Honda Type R's and things like that. You just cannot be this for all round performance. So well done to VW for producing the best hot hatch in our opinion. It's 40 years in the making of hot hatch history and heritage. And I think they've done an absolutely brilliant job of it. So we're gonna end this video here guys. And I thank you for watching, living with a Golf R. We've certainly enjoyed delivering this little little episode for you 
We're going to finish it off now. We're just getting back home. And thanks ever so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It'd be great to hear your comments in the comments box below as well. Um, we're going to probably do try and do a few more of these little sort of review videos for you guys. So keep an eye out on it. And please let us know if you enjoyed it. But for any other queries, mate, drop us a message down below. Bye.